how do you sentence a murderer? Well, in my years on the bench, of course, I had to sentence murderers. I, I've sentenced more than a thousand people uh, in my career as a trial court judge in New Jersey for every type of crime uh, imaginable, not death penalty. Uh, we didn't have a death penalty uh, at the time uh, and not treason. It's, it's rarely brought uh, in state courts, but everything else uh, imaginable, you know, sometimes as many as 15 sentences on a Friday, Friday after Friday after Friday. Uh, I generally remember the more severe sentences, uh, particularly the murder sentences. And it's not easy uh, to look into the eyes of someone who either has pleaded guilty to murder uh, or who has been convicted of murder. And I'm speaking, of course, of the Alex Murdoch uh, case. And, and the states differ. You know, in, in New Jersey, if the, if the jury verdict came in on a Thursday evening, I would never impose the sentence on a Friday. I would wait weeks and weeks and weeks. The defendant is not going anywhere. And the probation department has to give me a report of everything I need to know about the defendant's background. Even when the sentence is mandated by the legislature, the judge wants to know everything about the defendant's background. And in New Jersey and in most states, but I guess not in South Carolina, and I'm, I'm critical of the system, not of the judge. I thought the judge, uh, Judge uh, Clifton Newman, did a spectacular job. And you'll see him and hear from him in just a minute. Um, but but the judge, the tr the sentencing judge, really wants to know as much about the defendant as possible, much more than comes out uh, at a trial. And that's why, um, in at least in the Northeast and certainly in New Jersey, there's a long time, it's often as much as six to eight weeks uh, between the end of the trial, the conviction, and the actual imposition of sentencing, because there's so much material they have to give you. I've gotten probation reports which were an inch thick uh, because there's so much information uh, that the sentencing judge needs to know about. Apparently not in South Carolina. Um, the One of the jurors went on national television this, this morning and basically said there were two people on the jury in favor of acquittal, and one person was on the fence uh, and nine were adamant about conviction. It only took 45 minutes to convict. That is a very, very short period of time. This tells me that the jury did not review all the evidence uh, in uh, the jury room. It would have been impossible to have done so in 45 minutes. But it does tell me that they had firm and unbending uh, convictions in their, in their minds uh, about whether uh, Alex Murdoch is to be believed. And they decided not to believe him. In fact, uh, the the jury, juror uh, who spoke on national television this morning indicated that a number of them hated him. I've always cautioned juries, if you feel that you're coming to a conclusion now in the middle of the trial that the defendant is guilty, you have to tell me, and I'm going to remove you from the jury. Because under the law, the defendant is not guilty before the trial, He's not guilty during the trial. He's not guilty until you tell me, members of the jury, and I accept it. Throughout that entire process, he's not guilty. If you and your minds have decided he's guilty before all the evidence is in, then you violated your oath as a juror because you swore to me, at least in New Jersey, that you would not form an opinion on the guilt of the defendant until all the evidence is in. That was a solemn oath that each of you took. So if any of you wants to talk to me, send a note to uh, my clerk, and I'll speak with you in private. And we do that all the time in New Jersey. I don't know if they did it in, in this case. This is not something that's done uh, publicly. Uh, the juror that spoke this morning indicated a hatred uh, for uh, Alex Murdoch. You, you don't want to be tried by a jury that hates you. He may be a horrible, despicable person, and he apparently is, uh, but he has a right to a fair trial by a neutral jury, not by jurors who hate him. Okay, to Judge uh, Clifton Newman, it's about three minutes long, but it's uh, fascinating to watch, and I'll go through it with you uh, briefly afterwards. Here's the actual moment of the uh, sentencing. Alex um, um, Murdoch, by the way, his real name is Robert Alexander Murdoch. If you heard that name yesterday, that, that's who they're talking about. So uh, the defendant, Murdoch, was given the opportunity to address the court. 
I think of the thousand people I sent, maybe two chose not to speak to me. That is extremely, extremely rare. Mr. Murdoch chose not to address the court. The court asked him one or two questions and he answered, but there was no speech. There was no plea for mercy. Here now, Judge Clifton Newman and the sentencing, about three minutes long, worth watching, the sentencing of Alex Murdoch. Oh, what tangle web we weave. What did you mean by that? Then when I lied, I continued to lie. And the question is, when will it end? When will it end? And it, it's ended already for the jury because they've concluded that you continue to lie and lie throughout your testimony. And perhaps with all the throng of people here, they, for the most part, all believe or 80, 90 percent, 99 percent believe that you continue to lie now when you your statement of denial uh, to the court. <clears throat> and I know you have to see Paul and Maggie during the night times when you're attempting to go to sleep. I'm sure they come and visit you. I'm sure. All day and every night. Yeah, I'm sure. And they will continue to do so. And, and reflect on the last time they looked you in the eyes. As you looked the jury in the eyes. And, and now... Uh, have an opportunity to make your final appeal uh, as, a, as an ex-lawyer. And it's almost, uh, it's really surprising that you're waiving this right at this time. And if you opt to do so, it, it's on you. I, you're not compelled to say anything. But you have the opportunity to do so. And I tell you again, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son, Paul Paul. Well, it, and it might not have been you. It, it might have been uh, the, the monster you become when you... Uh, take 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 opioid pills. Maybe you become another person. Um, I, I've seen that before. The, you know, the, the person standing before me was not the person who committed the crime, though it's the same individual. Um, we'll leave that at that. All right, Mr. Murdo, I sentence you to the State Department of Corrections on each of the murder indictments in the murder of your wife, Maggie Murdoch, I sentence you for the term of the rest of your natural life for the murder of Paul Murdoch, whom you probably love so much. I sentence you to prison for murdering him for the rest of your natural life. Those sentences will run consecutive under the statute involving possession of a weapon during a violent crime. There is no sentence where life, a life sentence is imposed on other indictments. That is the sentence of the court, and you are remanded to the State Department of Corrections. And officers may carry forth on the imposition.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A fair and just sentence by uh, a fair and just judge uh, for a monster. Honestly, I thought the evidence was not sufficient to, to convict. I didn't watch the entire trial. I commented on it, as many of you know, uh, during the trial. I did watch some long parts of it. The, the cross-examination of the government's chief investigator showed that the evidence was gathered in a very sloppy way, which made it less than uh, believable. And I thought that Alex uh, made a, a credible uh, denial, but the jury uh, disagreed, and that's our system. Uh, in South Carolina, this type of uh, murder uh, carries um, a life sentence. He could have imposed 30 years, but he imposed life. I, I think Alex is uh, 54 years old, so they are effectively uh, the same imposition. It is odd that there's no pre-sentence investigation report that I was telling you about, that thick report, which tells you everything. It is also odd that the court did not go through what most of us do, which is a checklist of aggravating and mitigating factors. The, the behavior of the defendant in the case that made things worse or the aspects of the defendant's life which would make things better for him. Normally, judges go through that, even when the sentence is statutorily fixed. I mean, the judge could not have sentenced him to fewer than 30 years. Most judges would still go through that long checklist. There's about 15 or 20 aggravating factors and 15 or 20 mitigating factors. Most judges go through them anyway. Most sentences, for that reason, take about 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, in a case like this, it would take several hours because each side would speak, the defendant would speak, and then the court would go through the aggravating and mitigating factors, and then the court would highlight uh, what needs to be placed on the record from the pre-sentence investigation report. But each state uh, is different. This is certainly constitutional. It's certainly lawful. It's consistent with the uh, practice and procedure in South Carolina. Uh, I believe that Murdoch got a fair trial before a very fair and very patient a jurist, and to the extent that going to jail for life is justice when he blew the brains out of two people, the outcome was just.